All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory due unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rechakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the elect. Um, the title of this lesson is going to be, well, I don't really have a title. I should say the topic of this lesson is going to be proving that the Israelites um, have been made to speak the languages of the other nations, of the heathen nations. Okay, so the Israelites today um, are not, and by and large, speaking their native tongue because we're speaking the tongue of our our captive, uh, of our captors, I should say. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, improve that with some scriptures. Lord willing, you brothers are edified. Uh, this is Isaiah. I'm sorry, Psalms chapter 19, verse one. It says. The heavens declare the glory of the Most High, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night uh, showeth knowledge. Now, this is uh, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding being shown forth throughout the nation of Israel. Um, as you can see, day unto day, there's new videos coming up. Um, and, and even at nighttime, of course, brothers doing uh, lessons that, you know, all different times, uh, all different times of the, of the, uh, of the day. Okay. 24 hours brothers uploading videos, got brothers in different, uh, parts of the world where it may be nighttime in one part, it's daytime in other parts, you know? Um, and so verse three says, there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. And the glory of the, of Yahweh Bashim uh, is being shown forth. All right. Through this truth unto the sons of, uh, uh, the sons of God, so to speak. All right. The, the, the nation of Israel. And, um, it's a beautiful thing, man, because this is proving that there's, there's Israelites that, um, basically are speaking these other languages, but they need to receive this word. So it's not gonna, uh, the Lord is not going to just limit this word being pushed out in only one language. All right. Even though we know that outside of, uh, Mandarin or Chinese Mandarin, English is the uh, most widely spoken language. There's other uh, Israelites that don't speak English. Okay, many in, uh, Israelites that don't speak English. That's why you have uh, brothers who speak Spanish and various other languages. Okay, because we have been uh, made uh, captives of this place, man. All right, captives of these of these Edomites, I should say. Okay, which speak these various different languages. Um, next, I want to keep going on, verse four. It says their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. Uh, in them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. All right. And so that line going out is that word, man, the word, man, going out uh, through way of the Internet. OK, because before there will be no before the Internet, there will be no real way to spread uh, uh, the truth as efficiently as the Internet has allowed us to do so. All right. That's why we put, that's why we post videos on YouTube. Of course, we go out on the highways and byways. All right. For, for direct, uh, you know, human, uh, interaction, but we, what broadcast those, uh, through the, uh, through, through, uh, through the internet, which can be seen in any country as long as you have internet access. So that's how that line is going, uh, gone throughout all the earth. Okay. And the words, of this truth throughout the whole world, man, because there's Israelites spread out across the four corners of the globe. All right. Now, uh, next scripture I want to get was, uh, is Acts. And like I said, this is proving, this is just proving that the Israelites spoke different languages. That's the, that's just the sole purpose of this lesson, proving that Israelites spoke, uh, different, different languages than, uh, just Hebrew. Okay. And so that's why, you know, this word gets pushed out in different languages as well. Um, Acts chapter two, um, verse, verse eight is the point it says, and how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born because, uh, matter of fact, you should, I might as well start up. I mean, you know, I guess I can start up one verse one real quick. Acts two and one. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, which is the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Pentecost is a high holy day that required the, uh, the Israelites to come to Jerusalem. 
Okay. Uh, it says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. So the apostles uh, basically were filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. And they started prophesying, right? Verse three, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire uh, and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. All right. Meaning speak the different languages of the various nations that are around about them um, uh, as the spirit gave them utterance. Right. Because uh, there's certain there's certain men that pretty much <laughs> that pretty much will only really believe uh, uh, unless would not only really believe unless uh, a miracle, you know, was shown unto them, you know. And so this is this was a sign, right? If you uh, let me see here, I'll just keep reading. I'll keep reading. Verse five, verse five, it says, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. OK, so all of the devout uh, uh, Israelites, they knew that they were Israelites. They came to uh, keep the uh, keep the feast. OK, keep the high holy day. And what it says out of every nation under heaven, meaning uh, they're speaking, they, they, they're speaking different languages. When they go home, there's, there, you know, whatever corresponding nation that they were that they were traveling from. That's that language that they're going to speak. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard heard them speak in his own language okay so they were they were amazed man when they saw the uh the truth being preached in their own language why verse uh 17 it says and they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another behold are are not all these which speak galileans right so they were they were they knew that the men that were speaking were not from from their the, their their countries they knew that they were native to that uh to that area the Sea of you know Galilee, is, which is uh in the it's it's within the landmass of uh of of Judea. Um, let me see here, verse eight. It says, "And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born?" And then it lists the, the different nations where they were where they were uh, born in. Okay, which is, I mean, it's a wide variety of uh, different nations. So, so this was uh, pretty much used as a. Uh, a miracle pretty much to get the attention. Okay. Cause after this comes the sermon, right? Uh, cause Peter sits, you know, stands up and you read, read the story. All right. But this is all to get the attention of those, uh, uh, various Israelite, uh, Israelites that lived in these different, in these different nations, um, to get them to believe man. And, and it, and it tells you that there was thousands of, uh, believers that, that believe that day. So that was all uh, uh, through the spirit for the most high to, to, um, bring those men into the faith. Okay. But the point is they were speaking different languages. Okay. Why? Because we were taken over, uh, by the, by these various nations, man. Okay. Simple as that. Just like when in the kingdom, this, uh, uh, uh the, the language of the earth is not going to be English. It's going to be Hebrew. Why? Because the Hebrew Israelites were going to, are going to be in rulership. Um, let me see. So I had these scriptures lined up. Next one I'm going to get is uh, is Nehemiah. OK, um, Nehemiah chapter 13. And uh, let me see. And 24. OK. Matter of fact, I'll start at verse tw uh, 23. It says in in those days also saw I. Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and Moab. Now, these are different nations. These are uh, uh, heathen nations, okay? And what did it say? It said, and their children spake half <laughs> in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people, right? So what happens when, you, when, when we get removed from our... Uh, our speech or our, or our language in our nation, we forget the language that we uh, are, are, is supposed to be our native tongue. It becomes our native tongue becomes the, the, the tongue of these other nations, man. We are the only the Israelites are the only the, the true Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans are the only 
a, a nation of people that do not have their original language, man. Okay. And I'm talking about when I say original, I'm not talking about because you got some people say, oh, well, you got some uh, Native Americans that they speak their languages. I'm talking about our, our original language, man, which is which is Hebrew. OK, that's what we are. According to the Bible, we're Hebrew Israelites. All these other nations, they have their own language. But here we are. Here we are uh, speaking English and Spanish and, and French. OK. Why? Because. Like I said, this the language has been taken away uh, from us as a as a nation. But the beautiful thing is, it's getting brought back, okay. <laughs> and 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 to show you that speaking these other languages um, really is a is a it's a really sad thing, man. Uh, if you read verse twenty five, it says, uh, "And I can." This is Nehemiah speaking. And I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair, say, and made them swear by the Most High, saying. Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons or for yourselves. Right. Um, uh, why? Because we, we know that you, they end up worshiping the uh, worshiping the gods of the other nations. OK. And just getting all mingled and, and, and close with all these uh, heathenistic customs, man, is not the is not the way to go, man. Jeremiah uh, 10th chapter talks, uh, tells you about uh, tells us about uh, learning not learning not the way of the heathen okay um but you know we're, we're for we've been forced we've been forced to speak the language of our oppressors because we um are, are in captivity okay and they want to have us you know they don't they don't want to they don't want to imagine imagine if we had our own language and we do but we got our own language okay and 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 we're speaking to uh to each other in a language that our oppressors can't understand hell no they want to know what we're saying that's why they made us uh, speak the language of uh, of you know uh, that they spoke. You know what I mean? You know how annoying it is when you go, uh, for example, and uh, uh, you go to uh, you know a Japanese or you know a Moabite spot uh, or Ammonite spot, Japanese spot, um, and or whatever Vietnamese, and they go uh, you know kind of talk to the side to themselves, but you right there, and it's like you know they're talking smack, but you can't on you don't know what they're saying. Well. Imagine that for Esau, man, you, you, you know, obviously having slaves, you want to know what your slaves are saying because they could be conspiring against you if they're speaking in a language that you don't understand. So anyway, uh, this is uh, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11. It says, for with stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to this people? Right. So uh, this is talking about the prophets. All right. Uh, prophesying to uh, the nation of Israel. Okay, we're prophesying to the nation of Israel in these various tongues. It said another tongue. Okay, in these various languages. When you look at that word tongue, it's link goes into languages. Okay. And why is that? It, because that is the language uh, of, that the people understand. So it must be spoken uh, uh, in order for, for edification to come uh, come forth, man. All right. Um, a couple more. And uh, this is uh, Jeremiah. Yeah, let me see where I want to start with this one. Um, okay, I'll uh, I'll do I'll do Jeremiah five and eleven. For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dealt very treacherously against me, saith Yahweh. All right, so the Most High, uh, w w and these this during the time of Jeremiah, uh, you know, was seeing all of the atrocities of uh, uh the northern and southern kingdom and he was he was disgusted man you know it says uh they have belied yahweh and said it is not he neither shall evil come upon us neither shall we see sword nor famine and so uh our people and this is how we know that the so-called negroes uh, latinos and native americans are the israelites our people were ignoring the elephant in the room of look these other nations are 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 taking these nations these other nations over and here we are not uh in order and in the right spirit with you how about shimmy what do you think is going to happen man but our people th just think that everything was going to be they thought back then that everything was going to be cool you know what i mean and in some way somehow we're going to be able to chill and not and not ask the most high for deliverance well 
sadly, uh, they were mistaken, man. Sadly, we were mistaken as a nation. And Nebuchadnezzar came through uh, with his army, okay, and, and utterly uh, destroyed uh, Jerusalem and the temple, okay, which is a huge turning point in history. Um, okay, so it says, and that's why that's why we need to know history in order to break down the prophecies. Um, we need to know what time, uh, what time period Jeremiah was prophesying during and things of that nature. Uh, but anyway, it says, and the prophets shall become wind verse 13 and the prophets shall become wind and the word is not in them. Thus shall it be done unto them. Okay. And the prophets of these, uh, really they were Israelites, but they were, but they were, uh, uh, uh prophets of Baal. Okay, so you can understand prophets of, of, of these false gods of these other nations. Um, they they become basically, you know, wind, meaning they get blown away, man. So it's a metaphor. Basically, they're going to be done away with. All right. And they best believe they were done away with, man, um, during that time. Of course, you still got them now, but I'm just, you know, breaking it down. Verse uh, 14 says, wherefore, thus saith Yahweh of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my word, uh, my words in my in thy mouth fire and this people would and it shall devour them. Right. So they were devoured by the sword, by the famine, by pestilence during that time. All right. And it's going to those same uh, things are going to come upon the uh, uh, those the false prophets. Now, man, Ezekiel 13 talks about how uh, woe unto the false prophets. But I don't I don't want to get off topic. Here's the point. Verse uh, 15 here it says, lo, I will bring a nation upon you from far. O, uh, o house of Israel, saith Yahweh, it is a mighty nation. It is an ancient nation, a nation whose language thou knowest not, neither understandest what they say. All right. We're talking about uh, Babylon, man. All right. The Most High allowed uh, Nebuchadnezzar and his armies to uh, to infiltrate uh, Israel. Well, and really, Israel was already north. I'll say like this Samaria or the northern kingdom was already it was already under subjection. Um I believe will depend on what time this I got to look it up exactly because, you know, it's kind of it was it was not too not too not too long. It wasn't, you know, like hundreds and hundreds of years difference. Uh, but anyway, that's besides the point. All right. This is definitely talking about the uh, the southern kingdom right here. So it says um, it is an ancient nation who's a nation whose language thou knowest not neither understandest what they say. So the southern kingdom. All right. Uh, Judah, Benjamin and Levi was in uh, danger of being infiltrated by by the enemy and he was uh and, and jeremiah was letting uh the uh, uh our people know okay that he's gonna that the most high was gonna bring upon israel a nation whose language uh they uh they that they knew not okay and guess what happened after that uh after that happened man after they were uh, overthrown and taken over okay um, that, that language, shoot, that's where you got the Assyrian text from. Okay. The, the, uh, you, you, you originally had the paleo Hebrew and then the, uh, the Assyrian, uh, uh, text was, was pretty much, uh, developed through, uh, being in the Babylonian captivity. Okay. Now we were still speaking, uh, we were still speaking, um, uh, 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 Hebrew after we were, you know, after we were delivered out of Babylon. Okay. But still, man, once once a nation, once you were in captivity under a nation for so long, you're going to eventually lose uh, parts of speech, man, certain parts of speech. And, uh, and over time and over time and over time, you, you'll lose the language overall, man, which is what you see happened uh, with us now, because we've been in captivity, man, we've been in captivity for hundreds of years now, man. OK, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring this to a close with this scripture, Lord willing. Uh, this is Zechariah chapter thir uh, three and nine. It says, for then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may call uh, that they may all call upon the name of Yahweh to serve him with one consent. And that is really what we look forward to, uh, because we don't have the pure language in its entirety uh, uh, yet. OK, right now we're coming back into that understanding through the spirit the lord is allowing us to receive uh certain words and certain uh, uh grammar uh, uh certain certain parts of grammar okay hebrew grammar okay but it's going to come back in its fullness just like how i'm talking speaking this language 
speaking this uh, lesson in English fluently, okay, we're going to be able to speak uh, uh, Hebrew fluently in the kingdom, man. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to sound a lot more pleasant to the ears than this uh, English. But anyway, uh, I'm going to finish the verse that they make all call upon the name of Yahweh, which is in Hebrew. Okay. Yahweh is not an English word. It's a Hebrew word. Okay. It says that they may all call upon the name of Yahweh to serve him with one consent. Okay. And that is going to be a beautiful day. That's the day that obviously we're going to have to be uh, 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 in the kingdom in order to serve the most high with one consent, because in order to uh, uh, really fulfill and, and do the law in its entirety, you have to have a freedom, man. Okay. Um, as a nation, we have to be a sovereign nation. And so that's the day that we're looking forward to. Uh, Lord willing, you brothers are edified and it made sense. Uh, uh, with that, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory due unto Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rachak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And peace and salutations to the elect. Shalom.